Do you believe in coincidences or do you think destiny is pulling the strings? Some breaking news right now at noon, a private investigator hired by former President Donald Trump's Georgia attorneys alleged more than 2,000 phone calls and just under 12,000 text messages took place between Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis and her special prosecutor Nathan Wade before he was hired. This morning, Trump attorney Steve Sadow and Jennifer Little filed an affidavit in Fulton County Superior Court from Charles Middlestad. That's a 59-year-old criminal defense investigator who's now been hired to provide a voice call and text history for Nathan Wade. Wade and Willis engaged in a now acknowledged, I should say, a romantic relationship, but the couple claim that their relationship began after Willis hired Wade to assist in her investigation and subsequent indictment of Trump and his allies. What's going on, crew? Welcome back to the show. I'm so glad you were able to make it back. Now, I want you to picture this, right? Late night comedy meets courtroom drama. Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade are literally the hottest legal duo in town right now. Now they say love is blind and that may be true. Some people may believe that. But is it also deaf to potential conflicts of interest? Because we've got receipts. It's like a legal entanglement that can make your head spin faster than a Beyblade on caffeine. Now I have this affidavit that I'm about to share with you, but before we get into the news, I just need to say this. Crew, you already know what to do. But if this is your first time here, I'm gonna ask if you could be ever so kind as to drop a token in a tip cup by hitting that like button because your support fuels the journey and I am grateful for every supporter that I have. Now, let's go ahead and get into the news. All right, so what we're looking at is an affidavit from Charles Middlestaff, right? What's an affidavit? I'm Glad you asked. An affidavit is a written testimony or a written proof that can be used as evidence, right, in a, in a legal proceeding or a court filings, right? So he is a private investigator for the Trump team, right? So what his job was is to go out and try and find anything that could potentially prove that the relationship between Fannie and uh, Nathan Wade started uh, prior to what it is that they testified uh, in court, right? So he went out to AT&T, um, petitioned to, you know, get those records from them. He actually got them. And he got them as a zip file. I'm going to be moving through this pretty quickly. And I'm actually going to leave a link to this particular affidavit so you can uh, read through it without hearing my ramblings and commentary. All right. So back to this. So uh, he actually got the zip file from AT&T that he requested from the period of January 1st, 2021, which is here. Right. Through 1130, 2021. Right. Which is prior to the dates that they actually said that uh, the relationship actually started. Right. So how the heck did he actually even get this? You know, what, what did he do to, to petition this? Right. Well, um, he used a, a tool called Cellhawk. Right. Cellhawk is considered by law enforcement to be the gold standard in cell phone records analytics. Gold standard in cell phone records analytics. That, that's interesting. All right. It's used throughout the United States and by Georgia law enforcement agencies and should be well known to the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. So that means that Fannie and both Nathan Wade are well familiar with Cellhawk. If you're not familiar with Cellhawk, like I was, and I had to go look it up, let's go ahead and go to their website. All right. So this is the Cellhawk uh, uh, website. It says powerful mobile phone surveillance tool operates in obscurity across the country. Cellhawk helps law enforcement visualize large quantities of information collected by cellular towers and providers. So the information is legit, right? Fannie's familiar with it. Wade is familiar with it. The entire uh, law enforcement and courthouse, everybody's familiar with it in Georgia, right? So it, it's legit, right? So he got the information. And one of the things that's pretty interesting about this uh, Cellhawk tool is that it has an inability to manipulate data. That means that once they receive the data, it is what it is. It's able to be tracked and traced to where you can't, or I'm not going to say you can't, but uh, it, it makes it improbable uh, for it to be tampered with because of all of the checks and balances that they have. Right. The affidavit goes on to say that uh, once they actually obtain the information, they can go ahead and, uh, you know, um, uh, store it in multiple different ways and they can run different uh, types of reports on it. And one of the reports that they can actually do because of this, uh, the filters that it has is what's called putting out geolocation. Right. Which can be displayed in unlimited ways, including via on an animated map. So what that means is that they're going to be able to use the IP uh, address from the computer or mobile device to kind of determine uh, in the real world where about you were actually at while the IP address was pinging off of the towers. Right. You guys let me know in the comments if I explained that to you correctly. I'm not a tech guy or anything like that. Right. So I'm doing my best. So under normal circumstances. Right. The, the affidavit goes on to say that, uh, you know, they're able to narrow down this information, uh, you know, pretty, pretty well. But because of the sheer size of the amount of data that they were actually able to collect, they had to narrow it down even more. So what they did was they had to comb through Mr. and Mrs. Wade's uh, uh, available records from 2021. The dates and timing, frequency, and duration. Let's go ahead and highlight this for you. You can keep up with me. Uh, duration of interactions are included as part of the report. 
right? Uh, the report revealed over 2,000, 2,000 voice calls, just under 12,000 text messages exchanged over the 11 month period in 2021. So they got the geolocation, right? So they're focusing on the geolocation activity near 3300 Dogwood Drive in Harperville, Georgia, which was the test of which was testified to uh, to by Miss Yearty, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, as the address of her condominium, uh, condominium and generating a report to reflect such activity. So given the urgency of everything, right, they, they narrowed it down and he constructed a very conservative geofence with isolated two cell phone towers in closest proximity to the address, one roughly 3,000 and the other 2,000 uh, feet away. So that report revealed 35 occasions where Mr. Wade's phone connected for an extended period to either one of the cell phone towers that was uh, in that uh, proximity near the Dogwood address. So once they got that information, they dug even deeper to pull out more information, specifically from September 11th through the 12th in 2021, in which he says, before I understand Mr. Wade was hired, and November 29th through the 30th, 2021, which was prior to what he understood was the in-court testimony that the romantic relationship began in 2022, right? So specifically, here it is, on September 11th, 2021, Mr. Wade's phone left the Doraville area and arrived within the geofence located on the Dogwood address at 10.45 p.m. The phone remained there until September 12th at 3.28 a.m. Can you say booty call? Right. Allegedly. I'm going to say booty call. That's what I think it was. I'm not accusing him or anything. I'm just saying that this is what I believe. Okay, we can't say for sure that's really what they were doing. Maybe he just went up there to pay Swapple. Like, you know, maybe they were just playing Swapple or maybe some cause or something like that. <laughs> right? But, or, or maybe, maybe, just that they consider this, maybe they were actually sitting up there thinking about how they were actually going to go ahead and indict Trump. That could be a possibility too, right? All jokes aside, that's probably what was going on. All right, the affidavit goes on to say, at which time the phone traveled directly to towers located in East Cobb, consistent with his routine, pinging at the residents in that area. The phone arrived in East Cobb approximately 4.05 a.m. and records demonstrate he sent a text at 4.20 a.m. to Miss Willis. Hey, baby, I made it home. I had a good time. I hope you had a good time, too. Let me just say allegedly, because we don't know what the texts say just yet. The affidavit goes on to say, additionally, on November 29th, 2021, Mr. Wade's phone was pinging on the East Cobb Towers near his residence and following a call from Miss Willis at 1132 p.m. While the call continued, his phone left East Cobb area just after midnight and arrived within the geofence located on the Dogwood address at 1243 a.m. And on November 30th, 2021, the phone remained there until 4.55 a.m. We don't know for sure what was going on. They could have been just playing footsies. Who knows? I'm not going to speculate. All right, fam, we just dissected some bombshell news about Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis. Charles Middlestat dropped an affidavit bomb, and this got everybody shook. First off, can we talk about the drama? This Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade entanglement is a mess, and honestly, it's making us look bad on the national stage. And when I say us, I'm talking about Black people. It's making us look bad. This magical cell hawk program is exposing a potential love affair that definitely started prior to 2021. And anyone with two brain cells that they could rub together could have seen this coming a mile away. But here's the thing though, it's not just about the gossip. That's embarrassing enough, it's more than that. These cell phone records could be the very key that shaped the whole foundation on the case against Trump. We're talking about potentially dismissing the racketeering charge against Trump because of the potential conflict of interest and some serious mishandling of taxpayer funds. The stakes couldn't be any higher and these two fools just embarrassed the hell out of us on a national stage. I mean, my gosh, the phone records alone just punches holes all in their story about when they said their relationship actually started. Once they're able to make the connection that Wade's involvement actually predates the Trump indictment, it is literally game over for this case. We're talking potential perjury charges for Fannie and Wade, and that is no small thing. And let's not forget the cherry on top. Disbarment? The inability to practice law? That is the ultimate professional gut punch. So that actually leads me to a question. Is love blind or does it have a keen sense of conflict? If you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, make sure you hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. I humbly thank you in advance for checking out my other videos. So until the next one, I'll catch you in the comments. I'm gone.